I would be remiss if I did not recognize them. Um, Kathy Ferris. If you'll see her. Yeah, she's president elect. I don't see Sarah Crook, but she's senior member advisor. Charlotte McDavid, who has been a past president and served in many roles, and she has been um, our past president advisor this year. Sue Newby, who we could not have done without. She kept our books straight. Thank you so much, Sue. Lynn Briggs and, and Susan Johnson, who I don't see this morning, but Lynn is here, uh, our membership chairman, and I, she'll have some words in a bit about membership. Gail Hurley. Wow. How would we have done without Gail this year? I don't know. She is vice president of programs and hard shoes to fill. Uh, Beverly Phillips. Yes, Beverly's recording secretary. As y'all know, Janet Sanders was show chairman, and our new show chairman is Nikki Cochran. You can stand, Nikki. Yay. Yay. Uh, Beverly Bates is not here, or I haven't seen her. She's on the way. Okay, she's on the way. When you see her walk in the door, you can clap for her. Um, Christy is in, you know, in charge of our website and obviously is here video in the meeting. Last month, Lisa Pruitt's not here today, but she filled in to do the video recording for our uh, night meeting. As you can see, it takes a village um, to keep our club going. Moving forward, and as we progress to a new slate of officers, we'll be asking each of you um, <clears throat> to send updates to our website information, including pictures of your paintings and a current picture of you to refresh our site. You can email that information to me or Christy Bunn and take into account that images need to be saved in a small format for transmission ease. Um, keep those pictures and updates coming for the next newsletter. Please feel free to send any and all updates to, uh, of any events you're participating in and or classes or awards um, you have garnered during the upcoming months. We'll also be asking each of you in 2023 to complete a member form to facilitate us with what area you would like to volunteer or serve in in a capacity in the future. Um, as you can see, it takes a lot of people to keep this going. We'll be highlighting our slate of officers in a few minutes and be thinking about how you can volunteer to help any of the officers in 2023. Um, I was going to double check this, but our proposed spring show is a uh, date is May 6th. If I'm wrong, y'all will tell me. Nikki's going to Nikki's going to talk about this. So Nikki, if you'll if you want to come up here and talk about the spring show and any updates. Yeah. Hi. So it is May 6th is the day we have and we're going to do it here again like we did it last year and i just wanted to share a couple things about our history um, so over 30 years ago our spring show was very different from how it is today um, there wasn't nothing was on computer there was no websites there were no uh, promotion uh, online nothing like that and um, things were kind of a little bit uh yeah different just maybe a little bit disorganized <laughs> and Janet stepped in and she had a lot of innovative ideas and she came along at, at a time where she uh, was willing to step in and help and they were like you're doing this from now on <laughs> and so um, yeah that was that was a really positive thing for the club and she came up with the idea like doing the floral the Norton's floral competition and allowing volunteers to have a a painting in the show uh, of that floral work and um, that helped really motivate people to get you know get involved and be part of it and so um, the keeping that in mind and thinking through all the changes that have happened since then um, it's been really exciting for me to be a part of it because Janet and other board members have been so uh, open to hearing my new ideas that I'm coming with and so last year I had the idea of let's do an online form. And so we did the online form for the first time. And I know Janet was a little bit concerned that some people might have difficulty 
with um, the technology, we're doing a new form. And that, sorry. So I wanted to say that most people did say that they felt like it was easier for them to apply, but I also wanted to say if anybody ever has any kind of technological, there's any technological difficulties, I think that's like an important part of us being able to accommodate for everyone, no matter where you're at. I'm happy to help assist, walk you through the forms, um, do it for you if I need to, or whatever whatever is needed. And so I want to make sure that nobody <coughs> feels that like if, if we're doing new things that anybody's going to get left behind because we don't want, yeah, we don't want that to happen for sure. And um, so as we're continuing and building on all the great things that we've done in the past and continuing to come up with new ideas, uh, the thing that we're doing this upcoming year is I've agreed to be the show chair and Janet is very relieved and she is going to be on the committee. So she's going to continue to help uh, transfer all the information and her experience over the years. And we have Laura Howland who has agreed to um, be on the committee. And there's a few other people who I haven't personally talked to because I was in a wreck yesterday. So uh, it was just a vendor vendor, but it did take up a lot of the afternoon. So. I didn't get a chance to talk to and confirm the other couple people who have expressed interest, so I'm not going to mention their names until I get confirmation. But uh, yeah, so I am very excited about the group that we're putting together and the committee that we're putting together this year. I think it's going to be um, just a really good, strong group with lots of um, creative ideas and everything. So. What we're gonna plan to do is I'm going to schedule a meeting where, um, based on the availability of the committee that we have so far, and if anybody is interested in joining this meeting, what we'll be doing is, number one, we'll be doing some uh, task explanation. We'll kind of do a breakdown of the groups of tasks that we have and talk through how we'll break it up, who will be delegated to what, and kind of agree upon how all that will, will look, but then we're also going to be doing some brainstorming, which I think will be really fun. And so if anybody would be interested in being a part of that, either if you think you might want to join the committee this year, or if you're interested in just finding out more about it, of what we're doing, and be interested in joining the committee perhaps in the following year, or if you are interested in volunteering or just want to contribute to the um, ideas and everything that we're going to be doing, I would really like you to email me and um, and then I can invite you once we have that date set, I can invite you to that meeting so that you could come and be part of that. So um, yeah, just email me through the, the standard show chair web, uh, email address and that will get to me or um, you can just email to the main uh, Mountain Brook Art Association, you know, through the main thing, and uh, our corresponding secretary would pass that on to me. So we also have a form on the website that is a contact yes. form that can be used. Right, you can use the contact form on the website or the standard email address, and either way that or a Facebook somebody, Messenger, maybe. Yeah, either that's easy. Yeah, cool. Whatever's easiest, and. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about it. I think that we we had a really great show last year. We set up a lot of things, and this year we're going to have even more time to plan, and hopefully we'll be able to um, get the application process started um, really early in the year this this year. So that'll make things that'll make a big improvement on all the planning. So we're really excited about it. I think it's going to be a really good show. So all right, thanks. All right. Um, as y'all know, the board made a decision to cancel the holiday show due to several circumstances. Although Nikki will be next year's show chairman and Janet will be stepping down from this chair position, the late date and very few members interested in participating deemed it best that we should plan now for a great holiday show next year by focusing our energies for 2023. As some of you were disappointed in not having a show uh, for the holidays, those were encouraged to meet at our night meeting and consider their own studio sale or tour. And there were other opportunities in the community that would allow any artist meeting show requirements to participate. Uh, I know Gail had told me that Winnie Cooper had knowledge of a show. Do you, Was can it you Jefferson share that? State? Yes. Jefferson State yeah. had a great show that Winnie took the time to send me a snail mail thing about it, and I got the word out, but not 
I forgot to put it in our newsletter or our recent email, but it, it, there's something that it's on my phone, which is being used right now, or I'm going to tell you about right. it. Right. If anybody <laughs> is yeah. interested in that, after the meeting, give Gail a yeah. heads up, can, and she can, she can forward sure. that to you yeah. and share it. Um, okay. Does anyone else know of any show or bazaar or something in our community that artists can participate in between now and the holidays? Okay. Well, tonight there's a reception from five to seven highlighting the paintings of 17 Alabama plein air artists at Aldridge Gardens. The reception's from five to seven and supposedly you're supposed to RSVP, but if you're here, and you've not RSVP'd and you'd like to come, I was assured yesterday that you are welcome. <laughs> so I'm just telling you. Is there, there will, a ticketing for this? Or? It does say that, but I clarified that yesterday and that is not necessary at all. Okay. It's a free event. Okay. There are refreshments. There will probably be, uh, let me see a show of hands of anybody that's going to be out there painting from three to five. Martha, myself, I think there's an uh, artist and um, the lot, our members here. And one is Amy Peterson, Amy Collins, Martha Fulgram, myself, Sue Newby, Etta Geary, Catherine Friend, Tony Hackney, and I'm not sure if Gail Cosby or Lisa Price, either one of them are members, but they're Birmingham artists that y'all might be familiar with. <coughs> and you know, there are other people that are sitting here that are also plein air artists. <laughs> And um, I'm not gonna mention any names <laughs> because I don't wanna embarrass anybody, but there are some other people amongst us that are very talented and should be showing in the show. They do? Yeah. Tell them that they're gonna be, did you say there'll be people out there painting, but that will start at three, right? Yes, that starts at three o'clock. If you wanna watch them. Yeah, I'll come. What a nice All right, day. reports. Um, Beverly Phillips has our minutes. Mm -hmm. Would y'all like to uh, I make a motion it, that we dispense with the minutes? Okay, Kathy Harris, Christy Bond seconds. If anybody's interested in seeing the minutes, yeah. Beverly right here will be able to give you that information. Treasures report. Yes, <coughs> This is as of <coughs> October the 31st. Our bank balance was 8,729.23. In November, we will be paying <coughs> renewals for business licenses, chamber dues, insurance. So we will have to some disbursements in November and December. We will finish the year in good shape and 2023 will be awesome for this club. Mm -hmm. If you have Thank any you. questions, I have the P&L statement and um, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank, Thank you for your work. Sue. Okay, our new business. I'm going to call on Kathy Ferris to come share with us a slate of officers and take nominations for the board. Okay. Okay, guys, we'll run down this real quickly since we want to get to the good, the good part. Ryan's presentation. Um, by virtue of being president-elect, that puts me in the position <laughs> as president. Um, these are nominees. Uh, president-elect, Christy Bunn for 2023. Vice President of Membership, um, Susan Johnsey, Lynn Briggs, and Linda Goldstein. We felt like they needed a little extra help. Um, Vice President of Programs, Martha Fulgham. Uh, corresponding Secretary, Susie Caffey. Um, recording Secretary Beverly Phillips, Treasurer Cindy Barr, immediate past president would of course be Dee Falls, and senior member at large would be Sarah Crook. Now, the fun part is open the floor for any additional nominees. <laughs> um, if anybody, this will go out by Survey Monkey, I believe. A um, couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. You should get an email. Please vote. We ha we really do. It's super simple to do. I yes. mean, it's a click, 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 it and it's Very simple easy. to go. And uh, we do need those responses back. We have found this is the easiest way to do to do the vote and get it out to everybody. I don't hear any more nominations. No. This will be our slate for 2023. Yay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Um, Dale. Okay. Oh my Can I, do we want to mention that we have the bylaws on the website now if anybody's interested and wants to go yes. check those out? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Go and read the, the bylaws. bylaws are there if you They're want. on the website now. So. The About Us page. On the About Us page. Thank you very much. And you all, Dee didn't recognize herself, so I think right. we need to give her yes. a <laughs> Last year, this time was finding um, yes. a slate of officers, and I started with the president. And when Dee said yes, it was like storm clouds started pouring. <laughs> thank everybody, and every person in here has something to contribute, even if you think, yep. oh, right, what can I do? So I appreciate Nikki's invitation to, to participate. If you have an opinion, <laughs> you should consider joining her, uh, her gathering. So um, excuse me. Yes. One more thing. The name tags. The name tags. Oh, did you want to address the name tag issue? Yeah. Yes. Come on, you right, right up here because it's going to be for the I membership. apologize. I forgot. Yeah. If you will, just go ahead. Okay. Lynn and Susan, come over here because it's being recorded okay. by um, Christy. This is very oh. important. Okay, for the name tag. So we have decided to make things simpler that you get to keep your name tag that I've made, take it home and you're responsible if you want to wear it the next time. If you don't, we're going to do stick on name tags. A lot of people uh, didn't want to put the uh, pen it on their shirts anyway. And this will make it simpler for somebody to come step in and substitute if, if I can't or Linda can't be here. So, perfect. So, if there are any objections and somebody <laughs> wants to do it, they're welcome to do it. <laughs> oh my goodness, thanks, Lynn. Um, just a plug for for Martha. She's my new best friend. She's taking <laughs> over this job. It yes. has been the best job, and I have loved doing it. Will be around to help in any way I can. But if you have ideas or if you run into an artist or someone that, that you could always go up to them and say hi i'm so and so have you would you consider doing a program for the mountain brook art association this esteemed group that's been around 40 plus years and we do give them a little siphon which is makes it um nice in that regard and so just keep that in mind and pass on your ideas to martha or me if you can't remember I don't know how to get in touch with Martha, but or the website. So um, I also have had a burning desire to help people who might not know how to do Instagram or Facebook. Would you give me an idea if you might be interested in learning some tips on Instagram? We might have a separate workshop or something. Anybody? Maybe everybody does it already. You all do it already. Okay. If you're if you're not doing Instagram or Facebook. And you're an artist, yeah, and you want to it. sell your work, yeah. and you want to promote your career, you're missing out. Yep. And so, anyway, we, we may still pull that together. You can speak to me later about it. But anyway, today's program is a gem. We are so honored to have the one of the founders of our group, whose class it was, <laughs> decided oh, we need to show our work. I think that's how I went on the, on the grounds of uh, Crestline Elementary. Ron Lewis has so many accolades, I couldn't begin to list them all. But my favorite one that I just learned about is he is one of seven signature watercolor association. Signature members of, of, the, watercolor of the Watercolor Society. Seven, only seven in Alabama have ever been at wow. that level. Is that what you said? Okay, I was asking him about some things. But anyway, uh, we are honored to have him. And just as a reminder, we are going to put this meeting and program on our website. So if you're not familiar with the website, you will want to do that. And Christy, any idea how long it will take you to uh, get it available? A couple just of when I, probably not that long, but it takes a good while to edit. So, mm -hmm. uh, and make sure, and upload. And upload. It depends, it yeah, depends. Um, also, if you are a YouTube user and you are not subscribed to the Mountain Brook Art Association YouTube page, 
please subscribe. We want to be able to, right now it's, it's youtube.com with a bunch of letters and numbers, but when we get a certain number, uh, we can change that to Mountain Brook Art Association uh, as our URL name. So. Great. Okay. Yep. Well, I'll turn it over to Ron and you all feel free to um, move in the room if you need to, a better viewpoint. We're going to hope this works okay. It's our first time to try to um, uh, project it. And uh, he said, you're welcome to come stand around, too, as long as you're not blocking somebody. So that would be good. And don't miss looking up close at his paintings, original paintings over the wall, including the photo reference he used to create them. So those are real treasures. All right, thanks, Ryan. I'm going to do it. I'll take it down from there. It's just a apple tree. And I'm going to change it around, try to make it look like it's a sunset or sunrise, whichever one you want. And um, just go from there and see what happens. And if you have any questions, ask them. Um, and if you want to stand up and walk around here, it's fine. Sure. Oh, that's okay. I think I can. Uh, I'll just I'll just do it wet. That'll give me a good excuse if I mess up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. This is my palette. I guess you can see it from there. But I've got ultramarine blue, uh, black, uh, dioxazine purple, phthalo blue, cerulean blue, white, sepia, yellow ochre, uh, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, cadmium orange, burnt sienna. And that's pretty much my palette. Uh, what kind of watercolor? Uh, whatever kind uh, is on sale. <laughs> or, uh, I, I like uh, uh, Windsor Newton's Series 1. but uh, uh, And I won some, uh, uh, what were these, Holbein from uh, the Alabama Watercolor Society one time. They're pretty good. <clears throat> I don't know what it is. I keep wanting their little sets of paint. So, uh, okay, I'm going to start off. I'm going to make it look like a uh, sun in here. I try to. Uh, I've drawn very faintly just a little circle here. This is going to be my sun. And like I say, if you want to get up and come up here, it's fine. It bothers me when everybody just sits around. <laughs> fair amount of it to begin with. And then I'm going to come in here, I think with some cadmium yellow. For where the sun is going to be. You bump the paper. <laughs> And this is, I think this is Windsor Newton paper. I usually prefer uh, arches, but they were out of the arches paper that I like, and Windsor Newton's pretty good. If you're going to do, uh, don't lean on the table. I'm sorry. I want to get up close and watch it. send you to the office. So. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's right. There is right there. <laughs> and I'm going to take some red. What can here? Cadmium red. It's uh, cadmium red hue, which means it's supposed to look like cadmium red, but it's not really the real stuff. Just gonna wet this. 
any highlights I have, I'll just come back and do it with white. Is that a size seven brush? Uh, I don't, this is one of my Winsor Newton sable brushes that's, uh, this thing is over 40 years old, so. Love it. Um, and like I was telling you, it was, I think it was like a hundred bucks 40 years ago. Wow. So, so it, it still works pretty good. So if you want to buy real expensive brushes, it's worth it. Wow. For watercolor. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, purple and come in here and I'm kind of looking at this guy. I'm going to do something different with this. If uh, probably most of y'all are oil painters or acrylic, and I'm going to mix some uh, uh, egg yolk with this to make it really turn it into egg tempera. Egg tempera, yeah. Yeah, and if you if you want to try this, the other thing you can use is just gum arabic. That's what this is, uh, and I use this with uh, uh, some in both of those paintings. Uh, I don't think I used any uh, temper with it. Yeah, gum arabic's what watercolor is made from. Uh, and I'm going to pour a little bit of this out. This is a little bit thicker than a. Uh, gum Arabic. Yeah. All this is, it's uh, egg yolk, enough water to make it like thick cream, and a couple of drops of vinegar. Hmm. And the vinegar will keep it uh, mm, from smelling too bad for about three or four days. <laughs> so, uh, if you keep white it refrigerated. Vinegar? Yeah, just, just white vinegar. Drops. Yeah. Uh, like a casein or casein? Wow. Do what? Is it like a casein? Um, uh, Casein, milk, no. it's not like that. No. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, egg, yolk. egg yolk, tempera, that's it, egg tempera, egg tempera. Yeah, uh, yeah if you're familiar with Andrew Wyeth, his egg temperas are, are mm. were uh, Incredible. just egg yolk, uh, dry pigment. pigment. Yeah. Okay, this is yellow ochre. I'm going to add a little of that to it to kind of thicken it up and come in here for this hillside. Sure, quiet. So that's what you We're do mesmerized. when you want a more <laughs> opaque application. Right. Yeah, this is going to look really thick when I get through with it. It's not going to look like a traditional watercolor. I love the way you can scratch into it and give it some mm -hmm. texture. You were doing that with another thing. And it's uh, okay to finger paint. <laughs> yes. Hmm, that does do. Just seeing what I'm doing. I know. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Just like a delay. You can look, watch up there. <laughs> Oh, that's yellow ochre. Started to do a cityscape, but they take too long, really.
Does the dry? Yeah, but it'll wash right out. Um, trying to think, I wanted to get this sky just a touch darker, I think. It's going to have a lot of purple tones in it. Yeah, I don't want it green. Uh, it works great outside. Is it? Yep. Okay. I've done many of them. The only problem is, especially at this uh, time of year, uh, the bees love it. Oh, gosh. Hello, Becky. Hello, Becky. Oh, the egg yolk. Well, there's protein in there, right? Yeah. You should have all that. I've never heard of that. You can just set up your water pellets. Huh? In front of your bees. Yeah. Okay, go back to my thinning brush. Get some more of these purple tones in. Not back over in here. I would love to be able to the see that photo. On the photo on the right oh. or his left. But let's do it like this. Do, do what now? I'm what just wondering. I'm just wondering, Ron, if no, wait, you, you don't you don't move. I'm trying to see if you just know. stick oh, it on the box. Of course. There you go. Silly. If he can stick it up on the box. Oh, here. Uh, it, Oh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. There we go, perfect. There we Thank go. Thank you. That's so helpful. Yeah, that's fine. But see, Thank that's you. under the 933. Yeah, Let me get this place. Is it oh. time to like, let's count. One Tennessee, two Tennessee, three Tennessee, four Tennessee, five Tennessee, six Tennessee, seven. There we go. Is that there? Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Fine. That's fine. I can see it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's bad to stop a watercolorist while they're painting. It's really, really not nice. Okay. What paper did you say that was, Ron? This is 140-pound uh, okay. cold press Windsor Newton okay. paper, and. Uh, really doesn't matter which paper you use. The two things you want to make sure of, one is that it's acid free, mm -hmm. and the other is that it's 100% cotton rag. Yeah. Other than that, uh, they're all pretty good. I'm gonna add some white to this just to get, like I say, so I can paint cool. quicker with it. Does the egg temper make that white a little bit more opaque than yeah. it would normally Yeah, have? it'll really stand up on it. Yeah, that's nice. You can get some effects with it that you can't get with just regular water. I like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you might have had that right here. Uh, yeah, I put it in a pencil sharpener. Okay. <laughs> put that up there. Yeah. So yeah, can you see that? What sort of uses well, to scratch? Uh -huh. There you go. <laughs> and left a good stiff brush too. Yeah. Not very prepared though. They can splatter some paint in here.
this is just all kind of background. The focal point will really be when I get to the trees and start putting them in. And I paint around as much as I can. I don't like to use uh, mascoid, the masking agent. Can y'all hear really him? Use... Uh, yes. Yes. If you have to talk, go in the back room, back of the room. We'll see you to the office. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the junior high principal. <laughs> Why don't you like using the masking? Uh, because most of the time when I use it, uh, when I pull it off, it's not exactly where I want it to be. Uh -huh. Or uh, it may be too much stuff in there. I'd rather go back and use white okay. and, uh, uh, and put the highlights in that way. And I'm holding on to a fair amount of white here. Uh, and it depends on the painting that I'm doing too. A lot of paintings you can paint around and uh, a lot of them I'm not under pressure uh, to do it as quickly like this one. No pressure. No pressure. Well, we had to be out of here at noon, so. <laughs> I will start. <laughs> yeah, but for you, there's no pressure. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to come in here, take a, uh, there's such a delay, <laughs> take a little so weird. rigor, this is just a, uh, see if that'll show up down here, I guess, uh, has real long bristles on it, come in here and use this for the trees, take some sepia and add it back into, uh, the paint that I'm using here. And one thing on this, I've changed my light source. So I've got to remember that the light is going to come from the sun that I'm going to have in here. Mm -hmm. um, can you go over that egg tempera again, please? Go, go over what was in the egg tempera. The egg tempera is just egg yolk, um, a little bit of water to make it about the consistency of uh, thick cream and a few drops of vinegar. So do you, does the tempera, the egg uh, yolk mixture, usually work best with warm colors as opposed to like blue? It doesn't, uh, it doesn't affect the, it so the, much? Yeah, the, uh, the color's not af affected by it. You, you would think that it would, uh -huh. but it doesn't. Uh, and I'm taking my pocket knife and I can go back in here and really scratch out some details. Is that what makes it opaque, more opaque? No. No. No, the thing that makes it more opaque is uh, the white that I've added to it. Okay. I'm using my excuse. I could really use my hair dryer right now. <laughs> I want this to look like uh, some other trees off in the distance. this thing to where it's not so stark. And the reason I'm using my little tin <coughs> pan, uh, I use this for uh, plain air painting. I'm going to have to add white to it too. Uh, and a uh, bottle of water will fit right down in there. So I can carry that. And 
Well, this just really messed up. I'll just add some white to it. There's a way to fix it. Is that what kind of white is that? Is that uh, it's uh, titanium white gouache. Wash. That's the uh, only white that I use. The gouache is uh, Chinese white is okay. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, this zinc white doesn't uh, cover quite as well as titanium white. Yeah. sky just doesn't want to get as dark as I want it to be. <laughs> the watercolor usually dries lighter than you apply it, but with your egg tempera mixture, does that seem to hold the value, the lightness and darkness pretty well, or does it dry darker? Uh, it, if you use a lot of it, it doesn't dry quite as dark or as light, uh -huh. but it'll, it'll still follow the same uh, feel as the uh, regular watercolor. Mm -hmm. Just needed to get that a little darker. I love that yellow. Mm. Here, that, now it looks more like a And you never waste money buying really good brushes for watercolor. Uh, for oil and acrylic, these brushes would never hit, never touch my oils or acrylics. And I'm going to go back and add a few little highlights to this one. Backlighting that tree. Right. So those little glints are just the. Right. Glints. These are. I'm, I'm thinking about the way the light is coming right through here. So I'm putting the highlights where the light would uh, strike the limbs in my painting, not in the photograph. And I want to get a little bit of uh, other color right through here before I come in and put another tree in. I'm going to put about three small trees in here and then do the big one. Uh, put another one about right here. Could have used my stool too. I'm just complaining. Kind of rough on your back now. Do I? So that is kind of rough on your back. You could bring that table over and lock the Oh, that's, that's okay. <laughs> okay. That is an odd angle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you know what we could have done, Ron, if I had thought about it? Have y'all ever seen those college mm -hmm. kids use these dorm bed boosters? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we could have brought those. We oh, could have yeah. brought it up six inches, and that would have helped. Yes. Well, I paint on a, even if I paint watercolor outside, I paint on an easel, uh -huh. and it's usually tilted about like that. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Ron, talk about your beautiful tree that you do. I struggle with trees. So uh, what is, what's your rule of thumb, or give me any tips you can. To just The main thing is uh, 
the trunk is going to be thicker and as you go up the uh, limbs are going to be thinner and the way you do it uh, take and press down on your brush to begin with I press down say right here where the uh, trunk is and as I go up I lift the brush off of the uh, the surface to get a thinner line and then you just kind and, of just and make sure that you're most people want to tend to do it like they're writing uh -huh. uh, but you want to do a, more of a Chinese method where you're pulling the brush behind you okay. and then you pull it and then just lift up uh -huh. and the line will get smaller well, talk about the shape of trees the shape of trees yeah. um, they uh, tend to uh, the limbs tend to be more straight out at the bottom and then as they go up they tend to reach up. Now these aren't that way because they've been pruned on the top. This is an apple orchard up, uh, run off the Blue Ridge Parkway, mm, about 30 miles south of Boone, North 30 Carolina. Miles, 30 miles south of Boone? Yeah. Oh, no, Texas. Yeah. Ron, in some of these um, competitions for, with water media, do they object to egg tempera? Egg no. Egg yolk? No. They don't? Uh, okay. I've got uh, some of the paintings I've gotten in the American Watercolor Society. Uh, the first one was pure uh, transparent watercolor. Didn't have anything to it. There was no white in the, uh, the paint. Uh, the next one, or another one that I got in, uh, was like this. It was a combination of watercolor, and I got one in uh, using acrylic also. There, uh, the criteria for watercolor is this any water-based medium on paper unvarnished. Hmm. And that's the American Watercolor Society? Yeah, that's, and most every other watercolor society, uh, Bases their uh, criteria off of theirs. Now I'll come in here with some white, and remember my light is coming from the left here. Yes. And for those competitions, you can also submit on UFO as opposed to traditional paper, can't you? Um, uh, I'm not so sure about that. I don't know what they're on. Uh, <coughs> always just I like paper. Right. I mean, this is what I painted on for. Yeah, this is why I use white instead of trying to hold on to the. Uh, I now understand what you're mm -hmm. talking about. There's some watercolors that won't use white, but uh, they invented uh, Chinese white, I think, in 1780 for watercolor, and it kind of changed what you could do with watercolor. What kind of white is that? Uh, it's it's uh, titanium white gouache. And it's Winsor Newton. Winsor Newton at one time made the very best watercolors. There was nobody that was even close to them. Now there's uh, a number of folks that make good, good quality stuff. Since my light's coming from the left, my shadow is going to kind of come out this way on this one.
spoil it a little bit more in here. Interrupt me if you need to say something, but I thought I would let you all know that today's door prizes are brought to you by <laughs> Alabama Art and Chris Cruz. And they include some cool coffee mugs like oh, wow. this, a golden acrylic, raw java. Raw java, I love it. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. And some golden paints. Oh, These are little um, sample booklets. There's one dot up there, I think. Mm -hmm. I'll open one of them so that you can see. Oh, here. Because we're going to have a lot of door prizes today. So if you don't win today, you are just not lucky. <laughs> this, this is uh, yellow ochre that I'm putting in. So if you're not signed in, go sign in. Okay, I'm just adding water to this. And... Okay. Windsor Newton's good. The whole vine that I've got here is good. Uh, any of them in their upper grades are pretty good. The main thing to look for in any paint is the pigment combination. Uh, the less expensive paints like, uh, you know, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, all of those are cheap pigments. So just check the uh, pigment content. The main difference between really expensive paint and uh, cheap paint is the amount of pigment uh, in the tube and how finely it's ground. Uh, the cheaper paint is going to be ground isn't going to be ground uh, quite as as well, and you're not going to get as much pigment in it. So you just base that on the price, or is it like they're reading? You can base it. Yeah, you can base it on the price okay. most of the time. So well, like a, acrylic. <laughs> A lot of y'all paint with acrylic paint, well, or oil. Uh, you get a cheap paint, a uh, tube of paint, and it's kind of thin, mm -hmm. kind of watery. Mm -hmm. And the reason is it doesn't have as much pigment in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're really paying for the pigment. You're not paying for the binder. Uh, mm -hmm. The binders are pretty much the same. Like most of the uh, acrylic binders, DuPont. Twenty minutes. So. Yeah, I'll be through in twenty minutes. Oh yeah. <laughs> if it actually holds up, you know, <laughs> does what it says it did. I think not recorded in the last one. Let's see what happens if I spray a little water on it. Okay, one more small tree, and then I'm going to go to the big ones. I generally paint from the feathers thing back forward, if I can. Uh, with oil, I can uh, paint around things a lot easier, but with watercolor, and especially acrylic. And if I were doing this in acrylic or oil, I'd probably do it almost the same. I only know one way to paint. <laughs> and watercolor is... Uh, a really good medium to learn to paint in because everything you do in watercolor can be applied to every other painting medium but that's not true of every other painting medium to watercolor Ron have you ever experimented with Sealing a watercolor painting with cold wax or some other spray-on uh, um, mm -hmm. 
Garnish. A um, mm -hmm. yeah. friend of mine, I don't know if y'all know Gary Curtis from Atlanta. Uh, he's a watercolorist. But uh, he got tired of uh, having to put everything under glass. And he mounts his on a, a board and varnishes them so that he doesn't have to uh, put them under glass. So that he varnishes the over the watercolor? Yep. Wow. With a spray varnish. Wow. Almost ready to get to the to the main focal point. This looks very Andrew Wyeth, Ron Lewis. It really does. Yeah, it uh, it's just the subject matter. Mm -hmm. I had another subject that I was going to do. This one was going to be a stream, and it would be bright greens and other colors, but. Uh, I was more in a mood to do this one, so. I'm going to this area over Thanksgiving, and this is where I go out to paint, so. Do you normally stand up to paint? Uh, probably about 80% of the time. Maybe some of this phthalo blue and mix some other colors in here too. Uh, kind of a dirty brown. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I have on my palette here. Sepia and a little bit of purple. I've added just a pinch of black to this. lost part of my drawing so I've got to just kind of imagine where <laughs> everything was. And the other thing, a really good brush will come to a good point and keep it uh, the color out of it but still want it so I can dry brush with it. Mm -hmm. 
you all probably know this already, but I think he's done a beautiful job of using broken brush stroke it, strokes in those further away branches. Yeah. That broken brush stroke gives the illusion of distance. And you know, up close, it's more solid, you know, because it's not as much atmosphere in the, in the way, but I just think that's beautiful. Oh, thank you. I didn't know I was doing that. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it comes back to it's natural to you. <laughs> So you don't always have to use a real, real small brush to do this. Come down to a small brush for that. If I want to lift some of this paint out, uh, this is where I forget my little stiff brush works much better. But uh, I can come back in here and just wet it and scrub it with a brush and then blot it with a rag. And it'll lift out a lot of the color. See how much of that lifted out? Yeah. If you want to do that, the thing uh, to remember is that you always scrub with a brush and blot with a rag. Don't ever scrub it with a rag because if you do, it'll uh, just uh, push the pigment down into the paper and you won't ever get it out. I'm trying to remember what lines I drew in here. <laughs> come back here with some white in just a minute and get some highlights on here. Then I could come back with a white, maybe a little yellow ochre. It's one thing you don't ever want to hear your doctor say. No. no. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> From what I understand. 
understand most of them have been trained to say, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you might not want to hear that either. <laughs> yeah, I was had a basal cell removed and was talking to the dermatologist when he was doing it. And uh, I told him, the only thing I don't want to hear you say is whoops. And he, he said, you think you're joking, but uh, you have to be really careful what you say to people, <laughs> around people. Charlotte's going to give me a phone. Oh. We can use it, get another phone going. So, but you all do as as members. If you want to get up and um, come up here, you're welcome to. As um, about the door prizes, I want you all to appreciate to Alabama Art and to Forstall because they mm -hmm. both have been very generous yes. this year, giving us things. I mean, they they always do. And this is and Alabama Art. And this one, I think, is just Alabama Art and Chris Cruz. And also a reminder that Dick Blick, yep. um, I wrote to them just a cold call saying, hey, we have this art, art group, and y'all ever get donations of door prizes? They sent me a wonderful box of stuff. So you never know till you ask. But, uh, and so we still have a few of those things. Yeah, I remember when uh, the water mixable oils first came out. Yes, uh, I just started those. And it was Windsor Newton. And uh, I, I wasn't too sure about how permanent they were or anything. And I called up a number for uh, Windsor Newton in hell for a minute. And they put me in contact with a chemist who developed them, which was really interesting. He said that there was uh, uh, no water used in the manufacture of the paint, uh, but they added one molecule to the strand of linseed oil that would accept water. And he said when it dried, it was like regular oil paint. It does take a while to dry, too. Yeah, it's and it doesn't, uh, it's an emulsion, so it doesn't, <clears throat> really thin as well with water. Mm -hmm. It thins better with uh, mineral spirits. But if you're traveling, they're really good to take. The couple of times we've got to go to Europe, that's what I took to uh, paint with. Is it talking about warm up to That's all over. Can you mix them with the water? Mm -mm. See, that's, that's what makes it. No, I just use, I have all the colors. Oh, and the water mixable, because that's all I've ever used. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I love them. They do. Yeah. I feel like They're butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. softened butter. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on the brand. The Cobras do. But the uh, ones are Newton, the Winton don't. Or the Artisan, I guess, is what they are. Well, yeah, if you, <clears throat> if you use them, <clears throat> uh, Grumbacher's Quick Dry Medium is the best medium I found to use with them. Somebody told me you said that, and I bought some of that. And it works good, it doesn't it? It work good. It has a real nice creamy feel, kind of like a stand oil and Damar varnish. Let me get some highlights on this and
and if you're going to use white, <clears throat> uh, it's good to add just a pinch of either yellow or yellow ochre to it a lot of times uh, to warm it up. some of this. You're welcome to come up and look. If I hear any snoring out there, I'll mow you. I'll mow you <laughs> You can never put too many limbs on a tree. It's easier to pull a brush than to push it, so. <clears throat> Helps to drink coffee when you're doing this, too. <laughs> no, helps to drink coffee. So you can do the lines a lot quicker. Yeah, get Okay, now if I want to scratch into this, this no, will either scratching. What are you doing? You're, are you really scratching the paper? Yeah. Well, I'm scratching lines into it. You want something that's sharp, but no, not so sharp that it'll cut the paper. Yeah. Although you can take a uh, razor and actually go back and scratch into the paper. But if you're doing that. You want to make sure that's the last thing you do because if you put paint on there, the paint's going to rush into that scratch and make a black, gotcha. black line. If I spray it like this. Uh, so you re-wet it. And then <laughs> yeah, then I can come back and see I can just scratch these lines right into it. Picture. Do what? How old is that picture that you have? Uh, I could tell it wasn't new. It was probably recent. 10 years old. <laughs> <clears throat> I may pull out something that I've had for ever to paint from, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, stuff that I've taken with my phone that I have to copy it off, like the other one that I brought in that I thought I might do. I just copied it. It was from a, the phone, and that's what that one would have been. Um, Oh, that's. Keep going, Gail. Different if you're plain air. You can't or see it. Uh, no. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. And he has that one drawn off. If you want to look at it. Yeah, I figured if I mess oh. this one up, I'd go to that one real quick. <laughs> we are not messing this up at all. That's no. Well, you know, watercolors are controlled mistakes. I've always called them. Yeah. Do what? I call watercolor controlled mistakes. Uh, yes. Or chaos. Controlled you can't paint with watercolor and uh, 
one of well, you can be real precise with it. I know people that are, but I, yeah. that's, I don't enjoy doing that. It is much more lace, sir. I'll tell you. The adding of the white gloss is like a game changer as far as scary factor. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you feel like, oh, I can't cover that up. Yeah. Right. Now, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's a totally different technique. Yeah. Especially that architectural. Oh, right. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can also you can also use uh, white charcoal. Oh really? uh, yes, ma'am. White charcoal to cover up the mistake. She was talking about architectural oh. things. You can use white charcoal over the watercolor if you have a bobble in a line. Or wow! Is there any more tips y'all want to share? I have one. I think I shared it before, but it's a miracle worker with watercolor. It's a Mr. Clean Eraser. Yes. Oh, yeah. See some really? nodding faces. Uh -huh. It was new to me when I heard about it, but it, it's amazing. Now, since my light source is back there, I've got to change where my That's shadows right. come yeah, from. Yeah, I was thinking about that. You leave in the path wide. Move this up just a little bit. Move it over. There we go. How many of you paid? Not like that, just something like that. I have paid. Wow. Great group. Yes. How many of you want to paint in watercolor? <laughs> 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 How many of you want to paint in watercolor? I'm sorry. 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 I'm I need to find some splatter in here. And then where this road is going to be. This need, this is where I could use my hair dryer. I need to let that dry a little bit. And I'll, then I can come back over it. I'm just going to dry brush this. I like a uh, paper that's got a little bit of texture to it so that when you uh, dry brush it. <laughs> that's my grandson. Everybody have a phone. Here we go. Um, the trick is... If anybody's curious, yeah, just come up and look. Please do that. Yes, it's definitely worth yeah, you're not seeing gonna bother close, me. But this is being brought to you by an Apple TV device. Y'all know the little things that make any TV into a smart TV. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then we'll publish it in Time Magazine. <laughs> well, what do I get for you? might get something. Finishing up, which uh, let's let's have a real show of hands on this one. Woo! <laughs> 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 
Yeah, yeah. You can keep going as long as you want to. We, we have the room until 12. So yeah, you you're good. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you you give everybody a chance to win the prize. We, we, yeah, we got to do the door. Now, Lynn's we'll got the numbered names. Everybody's on there. Yeah. Dee's going to do the generator. That's the number generator. Then your phone. Lynn will announce who it is. Yeah. She's got the door prize. They're asking if your painting is the door prize. <laughs> it can be yours, but you might need to leave him the check. Yes. <laughs> All right. Our first number is 16. Rick Plasters, you won a door prize. Do you want to pick something? Porcelain for on glass. This is porcelain paint. Yeah, I wish we could use it as a drip on acrylics. As a what? A drip on acrylics. So if you want to make something really thick, you just drip it on your acrylics and it. Okay. And alcohol inks. Very good. Good call. And these little things are watercolor based. Next. Ten. Uh, if this would dry, I'll show you one other thing you can do oh, with. Uh, Ron's showing one more thing that we can do. We can uh, take and splatter it with water. Oh. And splatter then. Splatter with water. And then let's just see if it'll lift up some to kind of get some light areas. Oh, yeah. Especially up in here. Okay, we can see that part. Oh, that's not good too well. Better. Oh, my God. I've seen a technique where you can throw salt. Yep. Water. Yeah. Yeah. Splattering it with water will do the same thing. It will do the same? Yep. Bubbly things. Because that's what I. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I'm just covering up some of the uh, light areas that I didn't want in here. This sun didn't work too well. Actually, those those lighter areas kind of are backlit. It's almost like that yellow. Yeah, it looks sun. it looks better up there than it does right here. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can fix it with white. And then I want to do one. And then if you pull a limb across the sun, it's going to be a little bit thinner. It's going to be a lot lighter, like right here.
like I said, you can't add too many limbs to it. Tell you what, why don't I take the uh, tape off? Okay, are y'all listening? He's going to take the tape off. Let me sign it first. Just to... Okay, then take it home and work on it. Now. Yeah, it's amazing when you take the uh, tape off, how, how clean it will look. So that kind of cleans it up. So. Thank you.